A few weeks ago at our Sunday service, I had the privilege to teach on Jehoshaphat's deliverance. And I read from 2 Chronicles chapter 20 of the deliverance at the time of Jehoshaphat. You can go to our archives and get that. It was an April 26 teaching called Jehoshaphat's Deliverance. And at the end, I summarized what I think are keys that we can learn from King Jehoshaphat in our own lives when we are in situations that are overwhelming or we need deliverance. The basic situation that Jehoshaphat was up against is that the nations of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, or Edom, had sent a great multitude and they were coming to invade Judah. Jehoshaphat was afraid. And then he sought God. He does a prayer. They heard a message from God and God said, you don't have to do anything. You go out, stand, station yourselves and God will deliver him. And all the armies of the Edomites, the Moabites, and the Ammonites, they all killed each other, and the people were saved. But what did Jehoshaphat do? First thing he did in verse 3 was Jehoshaphat was afraid and turned his attention to seek Yahweh and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. When you are in a situation, it's time to set your heart to seek God. Maybe you need to put away something. Maybe you need to put away uh, the TV or the internet. Um, and maybe you need to go on a fast. Maybe you need to spend time in really deep meditation into the scripture. Maybe you go away for a sabbatical, get away for a little bit, and set your mind and set your heart to seek God. And then in his prayer, first thing he does is he magnifies God. He tells of God's greatness, who he is. Jesus taught us the same thing. He said, when you pray, pray our Father who art in heaven. Holy is your name. Magnify God. We're praying to the creator of heaven and earth. Speak and magnify who God is. It's a great first principle. The next thing he does after he magnifies God is he rehearsed what God had done in the past for his people. Remember what God has said in the past. We have such fantastic record after record after record of God's deliverance for his people. When you pray, remind yourself of this. Pray that, God, you did this, and whatever it is, pick out a record of God's deliverance and bring that and rehearse that in your mind. Then the next thing that Jehoshaphat did, he gave the specific promise, and he quoted from 2 Chronicles 6, 28 through 31. First, he sets his heart to God. Then he magnifies God. Then he reminds of what happened in the past. Then he brings a specific promise that's written in the Word that's applicable to his situation. We have so many promises of God, specific things that God has said that you can pray. In your prayer to God, pray that. Pray that promise and say, God, you said this. This is in your word, and we are praying this to you today. And then the next thing he did was he was specific. He was specific about his situation. He said, God, look, it. here's what's going on. The Ammonites the Edomites and the Moabites, they're coming up against us. When you pray to God, be specific about your situation. Tell him specifically what you need. Give your petition to God. I remember when the blind men come and they ask Jesus for mercy. He said, well, what can I do for you? They're like, we're blind. We'd like to see, right? He didn't assume that's what they wanted. Be specific in your petition to God. Tell him what it is you want. And then I love the next thing he did. He acknowledged his powerlessness. Really important to speak and remind that you are powerless in the situation and you need God. Then, after he prayed, the Spirit comes on this man, Jehaziel, and he says, Thus says Yahweh to you. Jehoshaphat receives specific revelation. After he prayed, he waited, he heard God speak. That's so important that you don't just pray and then go out on your own. Wait! And there's many ways God can speak to you. He can speak through the Spirit. He can speak to you through Scripture. Another person can bring a word to you or in prayer, something revealed to your heart. There's different ways God can speak to you, but let Him speak. Be patient and wait. And if you don't, then you just continue to wait. And you continue to do those things that you know to do. Meditate, pray, fast, read the Bible. And then once he received this direction, consulted with the people, and they decided... Let's put the singers out first. They'll go before the armies. That's an important thing. Consult with the church, people in your community to help you. I'd love that, that he consulted with the people. And then after you have all this and you have prayed and you've received from God his word, you know what you're supposed to do. 
Now it's time to act out on faith. Some point, sometime, once you hear from God, get up and do what God said and act upon what God has said to do. And what the prophet said was, tomorrow, go out against this great assembly and stand. And you know what it says in verse 20? It says, they got up early in the morning and they went out and they consulted and they, they sent the singers out in front of them and the singers sang. And as the singers started singing, the, all that multitude, the Moabites, the Ammonites and Mount Seir, they all killed each other and they won the victory. Three days they collected spoil. And then it says that they returned to Jerusalem with harps and lyres and trumpets they came back and they praised God and blessed Yahweh. They didn't just say, oh, thanks God, now I'm on my own. No, no, they came back in thankful and gratitude they expressed and blessed and praised God. So I think these principles are just a great truth anytime when you are up against the wall, so to speak, and we need God's help. These are, this is what Jehoshaphat did. He set his heart to seek Yahweh. He magnified Yahweh. He rehearsed what God had done in the past. He brought scripture, the promise of God, into his prayer. He was specific about his situation and his petition to God. He acknowledged his powerlessness. He waited to hear God speak and receive specific direction. He consulted with the assembly, and then they walked out on faith and acted upon what God had said, and then they came back and praised. They thanked God and blessed Yahweh for his deliverance. May we be able to learn from these great lessons from Jehoshaphat.